It's Friday night at Southwest Youth Conference. Are you ready to have some church tonight? Come on, clap your hands across the congregation, the gathering here this evening. And why don't you just shout the name Jesus very quickly? It kind of ruined my plans jumping up here so early, but we'll just kind of roll with it at, at the moment, at this time. Uh, but we want to thank you, youth pastors, pastors, those that have made this trip. Thank you once again for joining us here this evening, for being a part of Southwest Youth Conference. Thank you, young people. Thank you for your time, for your effort. For uh, You may have had to take off school, take off your job to be here at Southwest Youth Conference. And we just want to say from Life Challenge Church in the Southwest Youth Conference team, thank you for being a part of this great meeting, for making it happen. Why don't you give yourself a hand clap? And once again, uh, can y'all go back to your seats just for like a few moments? Yeah. I'm sorry, but y'all y'all ruined my plans. See what happens when you get anxious and If you can remember what spot you were in, just get that spot when you come back up here, all right? And so I want to do something um, with everybody that has attended, come in from all over. Can you go ahead and take a seat real quick, just for like the next 30 seconds? Come on, just bear with me. And I want to know if this is your first Southwest Youth Conference. This is your very first time. We've been here five years. This is year five. This is the second year that we've sold out in a row. And I want to know who here, this is your very first time coming to Southwest Youth Conference. Stand up. That is amazing. Okay, you can sit back down. Um, we just want to get through a few things here this evening before we start service. Uh, once again, following service tonight, uh, we have rented the Odessa College Sports Center um, where you can play basketball, volleyball, racquetball. Um, you can hang out. We got food trucks. We ask that you would pr uh, please dress appropriately, dress modestly uh, for any activity that you're going to, going to be participating in. Um, once again, basketball, volleyball, dodgeball, racquetball, uh, food trucks. Who wants some good tacos? I think they got some video tacos. Yes, bless God. <laughs> All right. And so that's taking place tonight. And that will, um, that will commence from 10 o'clock to 1 p.m. So that's taking place from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., I'm sorry. So the next three hours we have there at Odessa College. Um, they've opened up the place for us. But with all that being said, again, please be respectful. Please be kind to the staff that is uh, volunteering, spending their time working uh, the event, working the facility, your representation of your church, your youth group, your youth pastors, those that brought you here. You're not just representing yourself, but you're representing your church. So please be respectful. And I want to thank you for being respectful, for um, taking your time, being patient with Rose's last night and everything going on this afternoon across the city. Thank you for your patience, for being respectful, for honoring those um, in the restaurants that you've been in. So thank you again, Southwest Youth Conference, young people. And once again, we have merch, we have Bible studies available out in the foyer. Um, I want to say thank you to this incredible, I want to say just team that has put together Southwest Youth Conference. Why don't you turn around and say thank you to that amazing media team. <laughs> Brother Gabriel, Brother Xavier, Sister Isaiah, Isaiah, everyone, Sister Serena, everybody that's running the cameras here, our camera crew, uh, the Powells, Braxton and Jessica Powell, Brother Nate, Rippy, um, he's here as well. And so everybody that has made this, I want to say, just happen. We have social media. Thank you for sharing, for tagging people for tagging us in your pictures, everything that you're doing, sharing the word about Southwest. Have you had fun here at Southwest Youth Conference? Have you been blessed? It's been a powerful time. 
And so I just want to say thank you to the media team, um, our musicians, our singers, Brother Kurt, Brother Austin, Brother Ewing, Brother Travis, Brother Colton, Brother Brett. Coming here from Little Rock, coming here from Louisiana, Nashville, Tennessee, Little Rock, Lumberton, North Carolina. So we got them all coming from all over. Thank you for coming from all over the place, our singers. Uh, our singers aren't here, but they, uh, we have composed a team and just uh, from different parts of the U.S., from East Texas, um, they're from all over. It's from Tennessee, from, I uh, think, yeah, Lord, they're from all over. Thank God. Thank God for the amazing team here. Um, thank you to our ushers, our coffee shop staff, our merch crew, the reception team, the hospitality team. For making this happen, putting on this incredible uh, event here this evening. Thank you to all of you once again. And as these young ministers, young evangelists, these youth leaders, some you may recognize, make their way up to the platform at this moment, um, there is somebody else that I want to honor and recognize here in the building this evening. Um, gentlemen, could you please bring me that, that plaque? Come on, leaders, ministers, preachers, come on. go ahead and come on here. We're waiting on you. Southwest Youth Conference started five years ago as an idea, as a burden, as just, I want to say, a passion for young people. Um, you can have a passion, but you need some direction. You need some instruction. You need somebody to hold you accountable. You need somebody to tell you no in the nicest way possible, let you know what you can do. And so we started the team. First year was a success. After the first year, we had a gentleman and his wife kind of step into the picture and say, this is what we can do to make it better. You know, let me take control of this. Let me offer some advice and some assistance here. These two individuals are very dear to this church, very dear to this conference. And I would go ahead and just say a lot of the success of Southwest Youth Conference, we can accredit just to their hard work and just to their responsibility and their willingness to tell me, <laughs> Daniel, no. And so I want to just take this moment and honor a man, honor his wife, my aunt, and my late uncle. I'll call him Dr. Gregory Burlingame, Burlingame Dr. Gregory Lee Burlingame and Melissa Burlingame, whom have sacrificed so much for this conference, to this church, and to the mission field, for the mission field. He never picked up a microphone, never preached a, a phenomenal, powerful message. But the churches that he was responsible for starting overseas, the churches, the people, the missionaries that he was able to send overseas because he was given seven, several thousand dollars a month out of his own pockets. Some of us, we don't even make that in a month, but that's what he gave a month for years and impacted the mission field. So at this moment, I want to honor Greg Burlingame, and I want to honor Melissa Burlingame for their hard work to the dedication to Southwest Youth Conference. She didn't know we were going to do this, but I, I want to present her with this, and I just want to say thank you. Can we say thank you to this incredible lady, this incredible family, for their effort, for their sacrifice, for their hard work in pushing the kingdom on? Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Burlingame family, the Lowe family. And then I want to just take a moment right now, and I just want to pass the microphone down this line. Uh, some of these folks that you see, these couples that you see behind me, you recognize they may be your youth pastor, your youth leader. They may be a, a youth leader or a voice of preacher that you've seen and attended conferences, rallies with. Um, we have a, a gathering of several organizations here, and I'll let them tell you what city they're from, what organization they're with, um, what they're a part of, youth president, youth leader, youth pastor, pastor. I'm just going to go ahead and, and do that right now. We're going to start over here with Brother Kerry Jones. I'm Brother Kerry Jones from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm a full-time evangelist. 
As a Cristo. Praise the Lord. For the Jacob Garcia District Youth President, Northwest Texas Apostolic Assembly. Brother Luke Curry, Bellevue, Florida. I'm an evangelist. Ben Rodriguez, missionary at Ensenada, Mexico, WPF. <laughs> Taylor Fish from Silsby, Texas. <laughs> Isaac Quijas, El Paso, Texas, but this is out of youth ministries. <laughs> My name is Jordan, and this is Ashley, and we are the Easters, and we are from Newport News, Virginia, and we serve as youth pastors there. I'm Brother Jacob Cofield. This is my wife, Kayla. We're district youth presidents for the West Texas, New Mexico district for the AOJC. Billy Johnson, this is my wife, April Johnson, and we're the youth pastors here at Life Challenge Church. I'm Nathan White, this is my wife Erin, and we are a full-time evangelist out of Silsby, Texas. My name is Jordan Hutzbeth, and I'm the assistant pastor of the Life Church in St. Petersburg, Florida. Landon Gore from Wiley, Texas. Evangelist Shane Burns, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, we can do a little bit of that. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you come expecting God to do something in this house, why don't you lift up your voice and lift up your hands for a moment and say, God, I want you to move in this house. God, I want you to touch my life. God, I want you to transform me. God, I want you to do something new. Come on, young people, for just one moment. Why don't you lift up your hands and lift up your voice and say, God, speak to me. God, do something afresh in me today. God, touch my mind. Touch my spirit. Touch my soul. I want you to listen to me for a moment. I want you to listen to me for a moment. We're going to pray. Brother Daniel asked me to pray, and I felt something very specific to pray for you for this service. I've got to tell you a little story. My son is here, Judah. He's four years old. He likes to watch this little strange video where they put the balls in the toilet and flush the toilet. <laughs> I got any witnesses in the house, any parents? And so, yeah, it's a little strange. He's unique. But he began to watch this, and I was working at the house one day, and I went to the guest bedroom, and I began to realize that it was really, really hot in the guest bedroom. So I'm thinking, okay, AC's not working. So my son, he's following me around. I'm wondering, I'm like, why is it so hot in the guest bedroom? And I go to the vent. <laughs> I go to the vent, and I see nothing but balls in the vent. And I said, my Lord, good, good grace, what do I need to do? So I begin to put my hand out and begin to pull these balls out. And when I begin to pull the balls out, the air begins to flow properly like it was supposed to. Some of us in this house, we've got some things that's stopping the flow that wants to happen. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to repent and ask God to forgive us so the flow can happen properly. I want you to lift your hands and I want you to lift up your voice, God, right now. By the authority of the Word of God and by the power that's in the name of Jesus, I pray that you sweep through this house. I pray that you forgive us and cleanse us and renew our right spirit. Come
Come on, let's lift him up. Let's worship him. You're worthy, Jesus. Come on, let's fill this atmosphere with praise right now. You're worthy, Jesus. You're all we want. You're all we need, God. You are welcome here, Lord. 
shout until it feels good to you. Shout in the building if you're ready for God to do what he wants to do. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get loose in the building. see them. We want to give them due honor. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Rain on the parade here. But I want to see the ministers. I want to see the preachers. And uh, we're begotten by the word of God. This great singing worship, Brother David, Brother Kurt, thank you all so much. You are, you are such a blessing. Sister Scott, God bless you. You're such a blessing, all of y'all. Thank y'all for what you do. And you do it the best. I want to have all the preachers of the gospel, the pastors, evangelists, once again, we've seen some of the leaders. Please stand with me here just a moment. We want to recognize you, pastors, district, whatever, official. All right. Look here, you can see up there and these people right here are some of the most important people in the world even though the liberal agenda world don't believe it this is this is important to us the word of God the man of God is very important to us and I want to thank you personally for being here on behalf of your church and your burden that you are trying to make a change and spark something in people to see it on a larger scale. Many years ago, I would load up kids that were rejects, keep standing, and they really weren't allowed in youth camp because they couldn't meet the dress code. And I know there has to be a dress code. But sometimes when you get folks off the street and out from behind their wiener schnitzel, they don't have it all together, you know? You just, you just, you gotta make something happen. I'd load those folks up in my suburban and I'd, well, pardon the expression, it sounds like cows or something, haul them. Well, transport them. I would transport them to meetings like this so they could be touched by a larger community of believers. I had it, but they couldn't see the vision. And you're doing yourself, your church, your young people a favor to put them in an environment that will affect them for eternity. I don't know how many hours, cars I tore up, dollars I spent to make a difference in people, and some of them are preaching the gospel today. Now, okay, that don't fit in most areas 
For you to do something like that, everybody else, they would meet after church and go eat at the steakhouse. I'd say, sorry, I have to go down here and pick up a few burritos at Taco Bell because i got this van load of people that I'm having to try to disciple and nurture in the things of God. It's like I became a weirdo in their sight. I, I couldn't go to their golf games. I couldn't even go eat with them after church because I had too many folks that I had to feed. Not just spiritually, but I had to go feed them literally with my own money. I had to feed them and disciple them in the things of God. You look at these preachers right here, and some of you, they probably paid your way up here. And I don't know if you really understand the magnitude of this, but this stuff is an eternal investment. When everything is faded or inflated, this stuff is never going to lose its value. This is eternal riches that these men right here, these preachers, evangelists, have invested in you. They're here. They brought you here. And you're the reason, all right, this meeting exists. It's so we can make a difference in the world. We want to thank our preachers again. I'll let them stand a little longer and get a good look at them. These people are some of the most important people in the world. And they are important to you and your eternal destiny. Thank God for these men that believe in you and believe in revival. Believe in the things of God. Now, that's all I was supposed to say. But these men are going to make a change in you. This meeting is going to make a change in you. And I want to, I'll just leave you with this one very elementary thought. We are not Joe Schmo Christian. You say, what's that? That's not just colloquialism. That's Sunday morning only Christian. So when I say Joe Schmo, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Because we're not going to live for God that way. We're going to live 365, 24-7. Everything we do. We're going to eat, sleep, breathe. Everything we do is going to be the kingdom of God. We're going to spread this kingdom. So what? You don't get in on their golf game or the good old boys club. I want to win souls and I want to have a revival. I don't care if I'm a member of your political club. I want to I, I wanna, I wanna affect the world. I want to affect some people with the power of the gospel. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, okay. I, I guess you're going to start another song, it looks like. All right? That's good. Come on, stand up. Make up your mind. When I go home, Monday, whenever, and I'm feeling all alone. And nobody else believes in what I got planted in my heart. I'm going to get crazy if I have to go to my job and I get in the break room. I'm going to find somebody that needs a Holy Ghost. Somebody that needs a Bible study. If there's any Bible study charts left, a very, very important to you is to have some discipleship tools. Brother Prado's Bible studies, there may be 10 or 15 left up there. Get them, buy them all. Don't go home empty handed. And take that Bible study with you into the schools, into the break room on the job. And if you don't even know what you're doing, take the thing and look through it if you haven't had a chance yet. Go and they'll say, what's that? You'll say, well, I just bought this Bible study chart, and I'm checking it out. You'll check it out with me. And then start teaching right there. Let, let me say this before I never get a chance to say anything. It's maybe my last time. I'm getting old, you know, okay? Now, I, I had taught in a high school for enough. Well, I taught building trades in one high school. I went to another school, taught building trades in New Mexico. Come to Odessa. I said, God's going to give me this job at Odessa High School. And uh, I had been there getting close to a year. I said, this ain't right. I come here to win souls. And I haven't prayed anybody through to the Holy Ghost in this classroom yet. 
Now, that's what I call revival. You take it to the streets, take it to the job. And I, I said, I'm not going to live like this. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, I come to Odessa to build a church for the cause of Christ. That plaque that was handed to Sister Melissa, her husband was one of the, one of the first ones in that high school that came to the Lord out of a Catholic family. Now, let me just say, give me a couple more seconds here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right. I said, Lord, I got to have some souls. I closed myself up in this place where we had some sort of power tools. I said, I got to have a revival. I started crying. Hey, man, when you're all by yourself, you thought God sent you somewhere. You're either going to be a fool or you're going to break it loose. That's all I can say. And I'm not going to cry for it. I got in that room. I said, I'm going to get crazy in this house. And some boys walked in the last period of the day. I said, hey, y'all want the Holy Ghost? And I'd had my Bible study chart sitting up there on the desk. And I said, would you like to have the Holy Ghost? I've been talking about this for months. Would you? And they said, I would. The boy sat down on my desk. Within about five minutes, he was talking in tongues. I said, I ain't, I ain't coming up. Can I say it like they do in the South? I ain't coming up in this house to play. I come here to have a revival. I'm going to shake something up if I lose my job. Praise God. Now, I know some of y'all said, oh, you should be wise. You've been so wise, you're a complete idiot. You had not done nothing for God. Why don't you quit trying to be wise? Conventional wisdom will not bring a revival. You got to be a fool for Jesus. Go back to your school. Go back to your job. And say, Lord, I'm walking in here today and I'm going to get fired or I'm going to fire somebody up with the Holy Ghost. I dare some of y'all. I dare you to do it. I dare you to do it. Praise God. Praise God. I got, I got, I know some of y'all have a problem with this, but the Bible says these signs follow the believer, not the preacher, the believer. In my name, they cast out devils. They lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Everybody in this house, I don't want to mess up your relationship with your preacher, but we don't have time for one man to do this job. All you guys were over there in that preacher class today with Brother Gore. It's time for you to get with the program and start reaching people. Praise God. Good. If I can do it, if I can do it, every one of y'all can surely do it. You are a soul winner. Come on, go and win souls. Stir up a revival. If it embarrasses you, do it anyhow. You're going to get over your embarrassment. You're going to. God, grant to your servants boldness. How oh, that miracles, signs, and wonders could be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. Well, if you got the victory in the house, you ought to act like it. Go out there. I've been looking for an excuse to shout. And now I got my excuse. So why don't we shout for me?
fail. Everything the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. Oh my goodness. Everything the devil tried. Trying to be 
cute when you come to church and say, Jesus, I don't care how I look. They used to sing songs like this. Victory is my Oh, victory is my Y'all don't know nothing about that. Victory today is my Uh-oh. What'd you tell Satan? I told Satan. Uh-oh. Yeah.
gonna feel real good to you to take your place, man. Sing it again, sing it again.
you have heard some of the best preaching in Pentecost at this meeting. Today you heard some phenomenal sessions. Start right here in the auditorium, Sister Tuttle. Back over to Jim for the Landon Gore. That was a blowout with all those folks called. Have a calling on their life. Brother Rivera, people told me, said, man, this was beyond right here. Brother Holmes preached the word of God, stirred our hearts today. Brother Kemp Attila, man, last night was, was awesome. All the other folks that's had input here, and it would be unfair just to put Brother Tuttle up here without introduction. He don't need it, but uh, Brother Tuttle is the real deal. You know, there's a certain ring about things that are just, you just don't have any facade there. He's the real deal. And when he preaches, hearts are affected. He don't preach about it. He's going to distribute something that flows through him in the Holy Ghost. Now, I have never heard Brother Tuttle preach one time that it didn't move me to a deeper thought process and desire in God. Young men like him are not easy to find. And they're in high demand. When you find one of these ministers, the voice of God in shoe leather. Here he is tonight in Odessa, Texas. We are privileged to have him here. He came to the first one. He was here in our first Southwest. Here he is back tonight. No, we love Brother Tuttle and what he stands for and preaches for and what he lives. We do that, we mean that. Come on, let's do it a little bit better. He's a very accomplished young man and God's gonna use him greatly. We haven't seen what God's gonna do with Matt Tuttle and we're gonna hear his voice tonight. It is the voice of God for the youth of today. God bless for the Tuttle, come on and take your liberty, you know that. There's no tethers on this pulpit. You preach everything you want to preach, my friend. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, why don't we give the Lord a great praise all across the house tonight. I would put that in the good praise category. Why don't we give the Lord a great praise? you enjoy this year Southwest Youth Conference. It's been a tremendous time in the Holy Ghost and what an uh, incredible meeting having been privileged to be part of the inaugural one five years ago and then to have watched from afar as this meeting has grown in power and in influence around the movement and then to be highly honored to be here again five years later. And I'm telling you, if the Lord tarries, I can't wait to see what God does through this great conference, the lives that are changed, the impact that it has on the apostolic movement. And I honor your leadership, the Smelser family. Aren't you thankful for this great family of God? We honor you and your love for truth and commitment to it. And so kind. And I just want to give honor, of course, to the church, every, the hospitality for my gift art that you gave me. It was just huge and two of every kind. And I think they had babies and it just was overgrown. It was unbelievable. That basket in my room is unbelievable. Thank you for that. And the preachers, the preaching has been incredible. Uh, we honor every man of God that stood up here. I'm going to tell you, in this world, to preach truth, it is worthy of double honor. And so we do honor uh, Brother Holmes, our uh, panelists today, Brother Gore, Sister Tuttle, and I'm so glad my wife is here. Amen. The best looking preacher of the whole thing. Brother Nelson was there, my friend. I love him. 
the Kempatella, powerful man of God. We are honored. Brother Gore, good man. Amen. John, uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1, familiar passage of Scripture as you turn there. Brother Smelser said he was going to give a little elementary thought about Joe Smo, and I thought, man, that's, that's deep. I will introduce you to what really elementary preaching is. <laughs> wow. If I could preach Joe Smo and it, it blow up like that, I'm telling you what. You, you know you got it going on when you can get up here and talk about Joe Smo and the Holy Ghost fall. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for most of y'all been worshiping the Lord. And I know some of you are here and you're like, man, I'm tired. And uh, I just, I don't even feel like it in no more. I've done praying. You know, I say it often. I got the solution. You know what you do when you don't feel like praising God? There's a Bible verse for it. You force it. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent take it by... I'm going to tell you something about a praise. A praise you feel, that's expected. But a praise you force. Hell's afraid of you clapping your hands when you don't feel it. It's, it does more damage to hell's kingdom when you come to Wednesday night youth class and you worship God with the same fervor, fire, passion, and anointing that you do right here. And so you need to make up your mind Come on, the devil doesn't ask permission. He forces his will on you. So guess what? I say we do the same to him tonight. We're tired, but we're going to force it. We might have to force a shot. We might have to force a run. But somehow, some way, there's going to be some violent execution of some addictions, afflictions. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Jeremiah 18 and 1. If you've arrived there on, in your Bibles or smartphones, say amen. amen. Awesome. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. And the Bible reads, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work, on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Look at your neighbor say, you're a vessel on a spinning wheel. And I'm going to tell you, it feels like our world is out of control. I said, it feels like our world is spinning crazy. We got 21% of your generation that does not know and, and is unsure about their sexual identity. They don't know which bathroom to go in. They don't know what kind of clothes. It feels like it's spinning out of control. You can't turn on the news. You can't open the newspaper, read something, and not say, my God, the world is out of control. It ain't in my nose. I can tell you where all this transgender and people confused about whether they're a girl or God. It didn't start in Hollywood. It started in a pulpit. When churches, oh yeah, I'm off my notes, but I, I've already started my clock. You want to know why your generation's so confused and who to blame it on? A preacher that let a woman get up on his platform with a pair of pants on. Because, come on. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. Yes, it is. Because what it did is it allowed a woman, come on, to question what she was, and it's an abomination unto the Lord, and something that's that insignificant in this hour. Hey, my great grandmother was a, a Methodist, never wore a pair of pants in her life because they didn't let them. Now, that same organization is debating and, and arguing about whether or not they should license homosexuals. That didn't start randomly one day. We got to trace back to the root. It didn't take very long. I know I'm off my note. Hey, that's why I'm going to say it again. When a man of God gets up in this pulpit and says, this is how we live, and he draws a line, 
He's not just making a theological statement to a group of people in order to get an agreement. He's taking a stand that has, that has prevailing and ongoing repercussions uh, through generations of time. It affects not only your little heart, your little feelings. Uh, it affects our nation and the direction of the world. As goes the pulpit, so goes our nation. So I say... When your man of God gets up and declares, come on, righteousness and holiness and separation, you get up on your feet. You rise for that word like it's a pull. Oh, come on, your applause for your man of God ought to be greater than it is for a political party affiliation or politician. Thank God that while the world is spinning out of control. Look at your neighbor and give him tonight's title. Say, the church is spinning in control. Now look at the neighbor you had to ignore to tell that and say, it's spinning in control. It's spinning in. Some of y'all worried, but I'm not worried. It's in control. Look at your neighbor say, it's in control. It's in control. Hallelujah. Father, anoint me to declare the word which you have given to me for this hour. I thank you for your people and these wonderful young people. I thank you for this extraordinary conference and the influence that it has, the ripple effects that are felt around the movement. I pray now, Lord, that you would speak clearly to us. I pray that ears would willingly receive and that it would be planted into the fertile soil of every heart. That when we leave this house, it would be with a renewed confidence and faith that you've got this and it's going to be okay. A, a commitment to remain where we are, planted, a, a tree planted. A, that is our commitment. I will give you praise and glory a, for you are truly worthy of it in the wonderful, matchless a, name of Jesus. A, and everybody said amen. amen. Why don't we put our hands together as we honor his word. One more time. You can be seated. I've been here four minutes, but most of that was paying bills, so we don't count that. <laughs> Spinning in control. In Jeremiah chapter 18, we, we find where God has spoken to the prophet Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house where God would reveal to him a work on a wheel. In verse 3 of 18 of Jeremiah, he says, Then I went down to the potter's house. And behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. It is here that we know that this work on the wheel historically has connotations. And, and we can look at all the theological stuff. But tonight, that, that work on the wheel, that piece of clay is you and I. I said he was working on the wheel. While, while many of us don't want to admit it, the truth of the matter is this. We are a work in progress. Ah, I said we are a work in progress. In pro he's still working. I know we like to, I know we like to pass ourselves off as the finished product, and Pentecost has robbed Hollywood of some great actors. Some of you should get a whatever it is, a Golden Globe or Academy Award for your acting skills because you can come and act like you've got it all together. You. You, you can sit there. You can put your tie on. It's amazing how we can shout and go home looking the same way we did it. And nothing changes in our life. We got it all figured out. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I ain't got nothing wrong with me. But, but let me just remind each and every one of us, me included, that he's still working. I said, he, hey, you just stick around a little while. Get in a youth group and you'll figure out all of our armpits stink. All of us, come on somebody, all of us got some stuff. And you know what people tend to do? They get their fingers out and start pointing and say, oh, can you believe that so-and-so did this and so-and-so's got that. And so I, I got to remind you what my mama used to tell me when you got a finger pointing at somebody. You got three pointing back at you because, and instead of you pointing at your brother, you ought to just say pointing at yourself and say, Lord, work on me. I came to the youth conference to let the Lord work on this message isn't for your neighbor. This word isn't for your friend. This one is for me. Preach to me, preacher. Get me up out of hell, preacher. Get a new conviction in me, preacher. I, I need the Lord to work on me. He's still working on me. 
And so I understand that as God begins to work on me, that there will be spinning that takes place in my life. And things will seem to be unstable. You'll get dizzy as God works on you. Come on, things will happen. People get attitudes. Uh, friends start talking. Family members disappear. Uh, and all of a sudden you're saying, oh, my goodness, Pastor. When I was in the world, uh, when I was out in the club and the bar, things were stable. When I was just a pew pimple sitting there like a deadhead, uh, things made sense. Uh, but then I made up my mind. Uh, I was going to be a front row fireball. I was going to be a worshiper. Uh, I was going to be a man or a woman of God. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, when I made up my mind, uh, things started going crazy in my life. What did you expect? When you were a pew pimple, you were just a hunk of mud in the backyard. But when you made up your mind uh, that you were going to live for God, he picked you up uh, and put you on a wheel uh, and started making some. No wonder everything's going crazy in your life. No wonder people are getting attitudes uh, and hell's coming against you. Because God is doing something uh, with your life. You ought to give God I said you ought to put your hands together and give him praise if you're a little dizzy. If you don't know what's going on and you've been throwing up off the side of the boat but you're still on the wheel, you ought to give him praise. If you're still in the house, you ought to lift your voice and let out a hallelujah. Because it's in control. You're still on the wheel and that lets you know it's in control. I mean, if you only knew where you should be, if you could get a, a picture of what you could be or, and what you should be, you should be laying in a gutter tonight. Some of us should be locked up in a prison cell tonight. Some of us should be in a morgue. See, there you go acting again. Keep on acting, actor. But I know, and you know, you didn't always think like this, look like this, dress like this. You know, had it not been for the grace of Almighty God, oh, had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, I truly, I would have been dis I would have been discarded on the wayside of life. But, but thank God. So I'm just praising God like a fool. What are you praising him for? I see some of y'all professional Pentecostals. Y'all got to have gold dust. You got to have a big fat tumor disappear. You got to see people get up out of wheelchairs. Then there's other people like us like me. We're just up here dancing like the fool because we're just here. We're still on the wheel. Oh God, I didn't get flung off yet. I'm still on the, that's enough reason to shout. That's enough reason to dance. I'm in the house. Can you praise him because of where you're not? Can you praise just because you're in a church and not in the club? Because it's it's, it's in control. It's, it's not in your control, but it's in control. It's not how you planned it out, but it's in control. Somebody ought to shout a spin and in control. The devil is a liar. And all along the way, you just ask David's little stone in a slingshot, you'll get dizzy every once in a while. Going to destiny. But the last and the worst thing you should do is hop up out of that wheel and get up out of that sand. Let me, let me tell you what the devil's solution is to every problem. He has, it's a universal solution that he presents and will present to you for every single problem that comes up in your life. He will say, give up. Give up on your marriage. Give up on your kids. Give up on your ministry. Quit your church. Uh, quit whatever the problem is that you've got. He says, whatever it is, just stop. Until finally you've got a gun. You come on. You've got one in the chamber. And a, just give it up. Just quit. That's the ultimate goal. Uh, give up. Quit. Uh, that's Satan's plan. But you cannot. Because just because the devil said it's over doesn't mean it's over. Ooh, I got to remind you the devil is a liar. 
I said, just because the devil is a liar, you can't, you, I love one of my favorite people to preach about is David. I, and you find him introducing him, himself in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 34. And David has come to Saul. And, and Saul has no idea who stands before him. And so he is reading his resume to Saul. And he says, your servant, in verse 34, you, you can put it up there, I think I got here. And David says, though thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamp. Now, I think it's crazy that he has to tell him. This is a funny passage of scripture. Because if I had taken a lamb, lion, and a bear by my hands, it don't matter how to kill it. If I'd have killed it with a rifle, if I'd have killed it with a bow and arrow, if I'd have killed it with a spear, I don't care how I killed it. If I'd have killed a lion, everybody would know about it. I'd have myself a www.lionkiller.com website <laughs> with a big old fat donate now link, you know, become a mon monthly supporter. Do you have a lion? $20,000. I'll come kill your lion for you. <laughs> you know, support this lion bear killing ministry on a monthly pledge. <laughs> he had to tell Saul he was a lion killer. He just did what was right when no one was watching he, he was that kind of guy. And, and the Bible says that this, he took a lamb out of, now I don't, I don't know how it is it with you, but actually I do because I know people because I am one. And after that introduction, you, you know, man, I'm just a human. That was a great introduction there. Thank you, bro. Michelle, I told you. Now, if you was out in the backyard letting your little Monty poo do a, t do a number two, and all of a sudden, up over the chain link fence comes old lion, and grabs little foo foo, and takes little foo foo. I know you. You would not go after the lion. You would build. A, you'd be calling wallbuilder.com, saying, "Hey, no, I need a lion-proof wall. You, you need a ten foot. Build it twenty feet, because I don't need no lion, and I, I'm not going after him. And I got another little fufu has a little another puppy, and he'll grow up. And so, you know what we need to do is we just need to build a wall and defend what remains." I said, what the natural inclination of humanity is to defend what remains. But David said, uh, he said, no, I'm not going to defend what remains. Uh, he said, I'm going to go up after him. Uh, and I'm going to. And I'm going to take it back. I'm going to take it back. I'm not going to give up and quit just because I got some conflicts. I'm not going to lay down my sword and spear and give up because the world's coming at us with a transgender. No, 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 no. The mission isn't just defense. You've got to have some defense. But to score points and win, you've got to unsheathe the sword. And you've, you've got to fight back. He said, I went up, I, verse 35, I went up after him and I smote him. I, you know what that means? He says, I punched him in the face. He said, I punched him in the face. He said, and, and I took back. Ooh, see, the propensity of humanity is uh, to automatically follow the road of most negativity. And if Fufu is in a lion's mouth. Your mind has already told you, Fufu is dead. I mean, why even go after the lamb? The lamb is dead. Why even go after? But I got to tell you, just because the lion has him in his mouth doesn't mean the lamb's dead. I said, just because he's in the lion's mouth doesn't mean he's dead. I said, the same God that can keep the mouth's lion shut, the mouth of a lion shut, he can keep it open. And I've come, I've come to tell you that you don't have to believe every lie from the pit of hell. God controls the mouth of the lion. God controls. You ought to go back up after your ministry. You ought to go back after your joy. You ought to go back after your mama and your daddy. You ought to go back after your brother and say the lion's got him, but the lamb's alive. Why? How do you know? Because it's in God's control. God said the lion doesn't get to decide if he gets to eat it or not. 
Because it's, I said it's in control. I said it's in control. And I know the devil's told you uh, that, that the anger and the lust uh, has stolen your ministry. Uh, and, and come on, and you feel like it's in the mouth of the lion. And then he told you uh, that you could never recover. You could never recover uh, the, 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 the abortion. You could never recover uh, the addiction. You could never recover uh, the pornography problem. Uh, but, oh, while hell may have it in its mouth. It's just waiting on a generation that says, I know who controls the mouths of the lions, and I'm coming for it. I'm coming she the sword, and know that it's in control. You ought to fight back. Verse the Bible says he took him, verse 35. He smote him. Then he took him. And when he took the lamb, Bible says that the lion turned on him because let me tell you, the mission of the lion was never the lamb. He was always after you. You say, I'll just give him a little joy. I'll just give him a little bit of my praise. I'll just give him the lamb of happiness. And my, you, you've offered up your dance saying, just leave me alone, lion. But let me tell you, he will always come back until there's no lamb left and then it's you, baby. He turns on him. That... That lion of addiction turns on him. That lion of pornography turns on him. That lion of lust turns on him and says, now I'm going to take you out. And instead of cowering down like a little 2020 snowflake, he rose up and said, oh, you want to fight? Let's go. And he, the Bible says he smote him. times did he hit him? He smote him and he hit him until he was dead. Let me tell you what you have to do to the devil. You don't stop dancing when the song ends. You don't stop shouting when the music stops. You stop shouting when the addiction's dead. You stop leaping when you're Come on, it's the last night of youth conference. Some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Ah, you ought to get up on your feet and put it under your feet. You ought to get your fist out and say we're going to fight until he's dead. Come on, let's kill him. Let's kill anger. Let's kill... High five your neighbors say the devil doesn't get to determine the outcome. And he said, I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. God had a plan of what I would be before he started spinning me. God did not pick you up flippantly. He didn't pick you up, put you on this, okay, what are we going to do with this one? Before he picked you up, he had a plan. I said again, you, you are not the result of a cosmic accident. You are not the result of a little fish that flopped up on the seashore, turned into a monkey, his tail fell off, and here you are today. I know that's why the world's acting like animals. What well, we really can't be shocked because they've been told they are animals. So I'm gonna counter, I don't care what your doctor science teacher told, he lied to you. You're not an advanced monkey. That's a lie. That is a lie. You aren't a glorified fish. You are the apple of his eye and the crown of his creation. You are anointed of God and he has divine plan and purpose for your life. I said there's a purpose. Don't you pull the trigger. Don't you get off the wheel. There's a plan for your life. But as you are on the wheel and it spins in control, you will find that at times his hand will push on you. His scalpel or sword or whatever he may use will cut on you. Even on the wheel sometimes, you're going to have some pain. I said even on the wheel sometimes, you're going to have. Ugh. 
I thought I, I thought I was on the wheel. Yeah, that's the hand of God molding you into. Don't get bitter. I said, don't get bitter. When you don't understand his hand, you must trust his plan. I said, see, that's what I, I've learned to do. I've learned that when I don't know what his hand is doing in my life, I trust you, God. I trust that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. I've got to bless you, Jesus, because I'm on the wheel. And if your hand is pushing me, it must be because your plan is good for me. So spin it on out. Spin it on around. It's in control. Touch your neighbor say, he knows. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. It is marred. Now he, this potter, in his hand, holds a marred vessel. Something that looks nothing like his original plan. I said, in his hand, he has something that does not reflect what he had planned. He, he didn't plan for it to be marred, but sin slipped in and marred the vessel. I said, there will come times in your life, young people, when what you hold in your hand is not what you had imagined in your mind. I said, there, there will be times, and some of you are here tonight, and five years ago, you were dancing and shouting. And I was here and I watched you. But now, oh, come on. Come on. Now I'm going to be a preacher. I'm going to be a missionary. But then, the marring happened. And you got addicted. And you got under condemnation. And you lost your virginity. And you lost your purity. Come on, somebody. And now you're just slipping in on the last night, coming into the youth youth meeting, saying, "Ah, oh, it's not like it's not like what I thought it would." Let me just talk to you. This is going to happen along the way. Life has a way of doing it this way, of marring our lives when we don't understand his life, his plan. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand. Look at your neighbor. Say it's in his hand. It doesn't say that it was by his hand. It says it was in his hand. It's not God's fault. I have to say that again because the whole world is blaming God for everything. God did not mar you. God didn't cause your parents to get divorced. It's not God's fault you got addicted. It's not God's fault that it all messed up and it fell apart. It's not God. It's in his hand, not by his hand. You got to say to him. And so instead of blaming God, I'm going to bless God. Because really, the mess is my bad. The mess is sin's bad. But even though it's marred, I said even though it's marred, it's still in his hand. I said I'm in his hand. That ought to give you enough reason to shout. I said you're not in the hand of man. You're not in the hand of hell. You're in the hand of God. It's in the hand Oh, I know you're in a mess. I know you're in pain. I know you're in problems. I know you might be in a prison, but your prison is in his. You say, well, it's God's fault. Yeah, yeah. You ought to thank God for God's fault. You know what fault lines are? That's where earthquakes happen. Uh, he builds prisons on top of his faults uh, to open up prison doors. You ought to bless God uh, that you're in his hand. Uh, I said you're in his hand. You're in his hand. In pain. In problem. In prison. God. I said God. He's in control. I love. Uh, you can't talk about a prison and not talk about Pastor Peter. In Acts chapter 12, verse 6, the Bible says, and now listen, young people, it's been a bad, bad season for the church. Herod has already executed James, his brother, and, and now he has incarcerated and locked up Peter. And the church has been praying, but the preacher doesn't know. The prison cell doesn't know that the preachers and the people are praying. And so the preacher's in the prison cell. And, and the Bible says that when Herod would have brought forth in the same, I need a, I need a, 
Ooh, where's Landon going? He's always using all our people. Come on up here, Landon. It's your turn. You're going to be that. You're going to be Peter. You be a prison. You be a guard. You're a Roman guard. You're a Roman guard. Come on, Roman guard. Oh, hold on. I got to just, I need your tie. Uh, your tie's, no, that's good. Give me a cheaper tie. Give me, yo, I better get back here. I need a cheap, cheap tie. All right, here we go. All right. Get up here. See, now we got to move this, this thing cheap. Ooh, oh, look at that. Okay, here's the prison cell. Sit down in here, brother, Pastor Peter. And you up in the prison, and you got one guard on this side, and you got one guard. Don't break that thing. I cannot afford it. Sit down. Oh, I can barely afford these ties. All right, now the Bible says lock him up. You got to chain him up. Chain him up, up, in, up around his arms, wherever you go. There it is. He's up in prison. And the Bible says he's asleep. Now, that, that's what it's two chains and the keeper before the door kept the prison. And behold, uh, the angel of the Lord came upon him uh, and the light shined in prison uh, and he smote uh, Peter on the side. So here he is. The Bible says he's sleeping because he's going to learn from Jesus what you do when you don't have anything else to do. You just chill. So he's chilling in his prison, and there he is, uh, just having a nice little, you, 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 you like smiling. Is, uh, I need you to fall asleep. He's asleep up in between the prison guards, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, I'm talking about these, these, these lights. Uh, I'm talking about the angelic light of the angel of God. Uh, but he don't wake up with the light. I said he didn't wake up with the light. There's some people you can get the light and preach the light, but they're still sleeping. S sleeping up in their chains, sleeping through sermons they should be shouting with. I see you sitting. The Bible says the angel of the Lord showed a light. But some people, the light don't work. So you know what the angel did next? Put it up there. They think I'm lying. Bible says the angel smote him. Y'all looking at me like, what smoke? That means punched him in the gut. That's what Bible says. Punched him in the side. Punched him in the belly. The angel said, light ain't working. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to punch you. It Imagine if he was a 2020 Rice Krispie that got soggy in two seconds. Come on, you know what I know. I can't, I can't believe you hurt my feelings. That was so, so unnecessary. You could, your words could have been much more gentle and thoughtful and considerate of my feelings. And, and baby, this ain't a massage parlor. This is a prison break. And what you got to decide, what you got to decide is do you want a preacher that'll preach you comfortable but leave you in your prison? Or do you want a man of God that'll come by and say, get up out of here. We're going to victory. We're going to victory. I want you to be free. So. Preacher. Don't worry about my feelings. Get me out of the hell of this addiction. Get me out of the hell of this affliction. Get me up out of the mess in my life. I've got to. Preach it to me, preacher. If your preacher's ever sucked you in the gut, you ought to give God praise. I know, no, I know there ain't many of y'all here, but all the people on the internet, you got a preacher that don't ever sock you in the gut. You need to find one that's got a pair of boxing gloves. Yeah. Hey, when your preacher socks you in the gut, he's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to get you out of the hell your family's in. Give me up, give me up, give whatever you got to do. Don't let me die in the bondage of my prison. Leave my text up there. These people think I'm lying. And a light shined in the prison and smoked Peter on the side and raised him up. The angel said, all right, now I got you. Get up. Arise. And the chains fell off. 
They didn't get it. Preacher shocks him, says, get up, and the chains. Well, maybe you and your mean self can't tell I can't get up. There's chains on me. And if you would take the chains off, I would shout. I'll get up when you liberate me. I'll get up when I get blessed. I'll shout when I get happy. No. He got up and the chains. Ooh. Do you need some victory? You ought to get up quickly. Do you need some Holy Ghost power? You ought to get up and watch the chains fall off your life. Oh, what would happen if you wouldn't stare at me? What would begin to clap with me? What would happen if you'd begin to leap with me? Hold on. We got like 13 people leaping. It's a major problem in Pentecost. When you say praise, they clap. And there's only two verses that say clap. But 16 verses that say dance. That's a ratio of one to eight. What are you saying? I'm saying for every one clap, you have to do eight jumps. Praise the Lord, somebody. Well, I can't get high. Then stay low, but you got to move your feet because it's in the Bible. I said it's in the... Oh, I see them shouting in the balcony. You know what happens? Chains start coming off. Chains. Coming up out of my grave. Coming up out of my grave. Coming up out of my prison. Coming up out of my shame. Coming up... And he is walking. And, and he thinks he's in a dream. He doesn't even believe it's really happening. He's just obeying, even though he don't believe it. Say it again. He's just obeying, even though he does not believe it. He thinks it's all imaginary. He thinks it's all fictitious. That's what the Bible says. Y'all got to read Joe's Bible. I said he thinks it's all fictitious. But he obeyed. And because he obeyed his man of God, even though he did not understand, doors started opening. Ways were made because he learned how to obey when he did not even understand. I'm off my notes. He was walking. He didn't have no keys. He'd come to a door. He didn't have no keys. You want to know how the door opened? Y'all ain't got modern technology down here in this desert dust bin. I went up to the Walmart door the other day, and it didn't open. So you know what I did? Y'all laughing. There's a little sensor called a motion. You want some doors to open? I don't know why nothing's happening in my life. Oh, I can tell you, you got to activate the sensor. You got to move your hands. You got to move your feet. You got to move your body. And if you start moving, even though you don't understand doors, because you don't have the key, he's got it. Because it's in his control. It's spinning in control. Somebody shout, it's in control. That's pretty good. If you like a Trinitarian. But I thought I was talking to people that he, they believe that God was the maker of heaven and earth. That God did it solo without assistance of a relative. I said, 
It's in control. You ought to shout, it's in control. We don't believe in the Trinity, by the way. There's only one God. Some of you are looking at me. I said there's only one God. And his name is? He's the Alpha and his name is? He's the Omega and his name is? He's the first and his name is? He's the last and his name is? He's the Lily of the Valley and his name is? He's a bright and morning star and his name is? He's the lily of the valley, and his name is. Jesus. He's the rose of Sharon, and his name is. Jesus. He's the father, and his name is. Jesus. He's the son, and his name is. Jesus. Oh, he's the Holy Ghost, and his name is. Jesus. It's in control, and his name is. Jesus. I said his name is. Jesus. I said his name is. Jesus. You ought to put your hands together and magnify the maker of the planet, the stars, all the universe, Jesus. Somebody's starting to get it. Somebody's starting to get that my mess is all right. That the world's in, it, it's okay. God hasn't lost control. He's still in control. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So. Somebody shout so. so. It is here that the potter holds all of creation. From the fall of man to the coming of Christ, all of humanity, you and I, are held in the potter's hand. Historically, this is Israel. Theologically, it's Adam, all his sons, being held. And he holds in his hand nothing that resembles his plan. He holds in his hand something that's marred and it's not his fault. And heaven is hushed and the angels are silent. Because so means a decision has to be made. It's marred in his hand. I can imagine as he holds it and he sits there, heaven being his throne and earth his footstool, looking at this. Looking at me. Marred. Cheating on him when I shouldn't. Lying when I shouldn't. Being unfaithful when I should be faithful. He's holding me. What's he going to do? And I can imagine the angels as they chatter behind his back. Throw it away. Discard, discard the mess. You've got the power to start over again. You, you could do something different. You, it was a mess and a disaster. You got us just, I mean, what else do you do? What else do you do? What else do you do with something that's marred? What do you do with a life that's so broken? What do you do with a marriage that's shattered? What do you do with a mind that's blown? So, he made it again. say he made it another. Now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He made it another. I got to ask you. 
Is it another? Or is it it? He made it. Again, another. Is it another? Or is it it? Is it it? Or is it another? Is it... Can, can I have somebody that says, yeah, yeah, yeah it's me, but, but it's, it, aren't you the same boy that used to be down at the club smoking? Yeah, it's me, but, but I'm another. Oh, aren't you the kid used to sit on the back row like a dead? Yeah, that's me, but, but I'm not that no more. He, he, didn't, he didn't start with new clay. He took the same clay. And he made it. You could have picked up new mud, but you took me. You could have took new clay, but you took the same clay and made it. You ought to give him praise at him and throw you down. And mm. he made it again. Look, you look at your name and say, it's still me. You say, I know I used to dance at the club. I still dance. I just got a new club. I used to shout for my team at the, at the, at down at the Dallas Cowboys stadium. I still shout, just got a new team. Still dance, just got a new partner. Still shout, just got a new shout. Still run, just got a new venue. He made it. And the vessel, I'm almost done, but it's the last night. The vessel, if this was a Hollywood movie, I would have, oh, what, another hour? If you went to the movies and got a 30 minute movie, you'd want your money back, but you want your preacher to put it up in and you complaining when we go 32 minutes. The devil is a liar. When's the last football game that went 45 minutes? They go hours and hours and you don't even know who's gonna win, but you're in this house. I said you're in this house where it's a guaranteed victory. Preach on, preacher. Preach on. I said the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So, somebody say so. It is here now that he has to make this decision. Do we kill it or pardon it? It is only with this problem that God is both judge and jury. And there God sits. Come up here, God. You are God. Sit there where Peter sat. You come here, justice. And justice is on this side. And in your hand, you hold all of humanity from the fall of Adam to the coming of Christ to the moment in which we live tonight. And you're looking. And in one ear, you've got justice. And justice says, throw it away. Throw it away. But in the other ear, you have mercy. And mercy says, so, discard them, discard them, but mercy said, so, remember their addiction, remember their addiction, but mercy said, so, remember their failure, remember their failure, but mercy said, so, remember when they failed, so, remember their failure, so, remember their abortion, so, remember their pain. So, remember their problem. So, remember their pornography. So, so what? I know I've got the power to make. I said when the devil comes and tells you you're unworthy, you got to look the devil in the eye and say, when the devil says you're an addict, you ought to say, when you, but you were raped. You're too poor. You backslid four times. People don't want holiness. You're too radical. 
you were an alcoholic. Your dad's not a preacher. You can't have revival. You don't have enough money. You're too old fashioned. You're too young. Woo! I've come to preach to every one of your excuses and say, you ought to look the devil in the face. I need you to get your, get your excuse as to why you haven't shouted this whole time. I need, I need you to get your excuse as to why you have not stepped into what God has called you to do. Get it in your mind right now. And on the count of three, you're going to say, so what, three times. Are you ready? One, two, three. You're in the Bible because the Bible says, let the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord look their adversary in the face and say, so what? I think I'll be blessed. I think I'll have a revival. I think I'll get my holy host back. I think I'll get my shout on. I've heard your excuses, but I say mercy, mercy. Get the music up here. Don't bring the slow singers. Don't bring the sad singers. Bring the shouting singers. Yeah, but we're supposed to weep with them that weep. We got that out of the way. We're also supposed to leap with them that leap. I need you to take your excuse in your hand. Right now, take your hand out. You know what it is, your age, your pedigree, your past, your sin, your failure, your shortcomings, your inadequacies. Your lack of talent, your whatever it is that you're using to not do what God has divinely called you to do. Put it in your hand now. I need you to wrap it into a fist. Wrap your fingers and your thumb. Put your thumb on top of your four fingers. Hold it. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray over every lie. And every demonic spirit. I'm going to pray against the spirit of insecurity that has gripped you and the complacency that holds you captive. From doing, don't, do not pray yet. We're not, we're not going into mo mourning mode. We're going into victory mode. Hold it. So what you going to do? After I have prayed, your eyes are closed. On the count of three, you are going to take your fist and throw it to the ground. And as you release it, you're going to begin to spin. And you're going to begin to shout. And you're going to begin to leap on that thing that has held you captive from being what God has called you to be. And you are going to march out of this. I said sorrow is about to turn to joy. I said weeping is about to turn, come on, into leaping. Failure is about to turn into your future. Your pain is about to turn into your promise. Because it's, it's not out of control. It's in control. Hold that in your hand, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray by the authority of the word of the Lord in the moment that you preordained and knew that I would step into the word that you knew would be spoken and received willingly into the heart of every young man and girl. I bind and take dominion and authority over every lie, over every excuse, over every insecurity that has taken control of the minds of this generation. And Father, I release a boldness into this generation, an apostolic authority to leap on that which has held them captive, to shout like they have never shouted, to march triumphantly into what you have called them 
now I need you to take that excuse I need you to prepare to launch it in the devil's face and then you're going to begin to turn and you're going to begin to shout and you're going to begin to speak with other tongues on the count of three one one two lift it up over your head it's the last time I'm going to use this it's the last time I'm going to let hell convince me I'm not qualified one two three for the next service. Ain't no next service. It's time for you to get it back. Uh, it's time for you to get it back. Take your left hand. Take your left hand and put it on your forehead. I need you to move it to the right. Now move it to the left. Now pull it off. Look at your hand. Is it glistening with sweat? Look at your neighbor and ask them, is your hand glistening with sweat? Because if it's not, the devil's not sweating either. I said if your hand's not glistening, hell's not worried. We about to get the devil nervous. I said you about to... I don't need all that. You ought to dance just to make the devil nervous. You ought to shout just to let the hell know you don't have the victory. It's mine.
Y'all getting a little weary? There's some people out in the floor you're not praising God. Ooh. But I got the solution. Open up all them back doors. You know what? You know, we have a we had a pandemic problem with the COVID, but we got a worse pandemic. It's called weariness. We've got, I'm not even kidding. We got, there, we got young people, huh? I'm like, why, why, why are you letting a 40 year old bald dude out shout you? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. It's, I mean, we got 15 year olds. They can't make it through the day without a Red Bull, a Bang, and a Monster. You sitting in the church house all tired. But I, I've told a few places I've been why I, I figured out why they're tired. Because they're turning the lights off in the churches. And darkness makes you sleepy. Furthermore, oh, see, I got like three, y'all all nervous because I got on your disco show. <laughs> but I don't give a flip. <laughs> but then I figured it out. When it's dark, you can't run. And the Bible says, that you shall run and not be weary. Listen now, listen now, if you are weary, it's because you're not running. If you're about to faint, it's because you stopped walking. Part the aisle, part it, give me, give me, give me. Listen, we're about to have a revival of the aisle running. Hold on, brother, well, y'all wait, stop. Run when I say go. Step. We're going to have the preachers lead the way. Scoot over, scoot over. Now listen, because y'all ain't doing it the way I need it done. I need it for all the people. See, they done disappeared. Okay, look. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to through them double doors right there. We're going to do, and we're going to spin through the lobby. If you can, come back over here and then jet in through here and back up on the platform. And you got to like run and spin because it's spinning. Well, aren't you worried that they're going to make fun of us? So what? What are they going to say on the internet? So what? What's my boyfriend going to think? So what?
stones at us. And they, they, they told me, they said, oh, your church, you guys are just trying to be like the club. And I said, no, 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 no. The devil is a thief. Satan cannot create things. All he can do is steal. Let, let me just give you for all the haters that haven't shouted yet. The church is not trying to be like the club. The club is trying to copy the church. The dance belongs to us. The shout belongs to me. And, and sometimes in the club, you just dance because it's fun. I'm going to tell you, the most underrated thing in the church is fun. Because living for God is a blast. And the Bible says a leap for just a leap because you're happy. I wonder if on the last dance or the la last call for the last dance for the last night of Southwest Youth Conference 2022, if you could just leap, dance, because it's fun. You ought to just have a party because your sins are washed away. You ought to just do a dance because the devil is defeated. You ought to just do a twirl because it's in control. It's going to be all right. I said it's going to be all right.
of Southwest. I want you to keep praising. If you're praying, I want you to keep praying. But there's a lot of people standing around this building right now that have sacrificed time, they've sacrificed effort, they've sacrificed money, they've done all types of things to make sure that Southwest happens. And I think we'd be remiss if we missed an opportunity to pray for every person from this, pray for every person from this church, from this body. Some of y'all may not care, but I care about what God's gonna do in Life Challenge Church. And I believe revival is gonna hit this church. Revival is gonna remain. Revival is gonna happen. This is what I think. I think we've already praised, we've already shouted, and we're gonna do a little bit more of that. But with the victory that you feel in your life and the victory that God has given you tonight, I think it'd be a good time to exercise that. And what I want you to do is I want you to find somebody from this local church. I don't care if you go out into the foyer. I don't care where you go. But find somebody from this local church and you ought to dance like it's your victory. You ought to praise like it's your victory. You ought to pray like it's your victory. I don't care if you go to the balcony. church in here like you're praying for your home church. We're going to have church in here like you're praying for your home city. And God is going to pour out miracles. God is going to pour out signs. God is going to pour out wonders. Have your attention just for a moment. The Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, because you've given him praise. He's now going to let you receive what you need. There are miracles in this house. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you know somebody from your youth group or your church that's here, God's going to pour out the Holy Ghost in this house. If you need healing in your body, people has been coming up being asked for prayer. I don't, you're not too young to get a miracle here tonight. I said you're not too young to receive a miracle here tonight. It may be in a preacher, a preacher's wife, a situation back at home that God's going to heal, a marriage, a situation, a circumstance that's not even connected to young people in this house. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, we're going to pray for you that you'll receive the Holy Ghost here tonight. If you have sicknesses, the doctor gave you a bad report. I don't care if it's tumors, I don't care if it's cancer, I don't care what it is, I don't care when it's happened, it's irrelevant. You've got God's attention tonight. The healer is in the house. The healer is in the house. This is what I want us to do. If you're here and you don't have the Holy Ghost and you want to receive the Holy Ghost tonight, you need to let us know. I want you to raise your hands. There's one right here. There's another here. All over in the balcony. I want you to raise your hands up high. I need altar workers. I need men of God. Men of, you know what? Forget all that. Young people, you're going to pray them through. You're going to pray them through to the Holy Ghost. So raise both your hands up. There's those are the ones that need the Holy Ghost. If you need a miracle, you need a miracle tonight in this house. I'm talking you need a miracle. You need God to do it. If you're believing tonight, tonight, I want you to raise your hand. Come on, God's fixing to do it. Get your hands up all over. They're in the balcony. They're everywhere. I need people that are nearby. You're going to help us pray. Listen, here in a moment, we're not even going to ask God to do anything. We're just going to begin to praise and worship him. And as we magnify him and exalt him, the miracle worker is going to start healing your body. What's that mean? That means if you're hurting and there's pain, it's going to leave. That means you're going to feel things on your body. You're going to know something's happening to me. I'm being healed by the power of God. Oh, I want you to raise your hands up in this house. Come on. You believe in God tonight. You ain't got to muster it up. The healer's in the house. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice and just give God praise. Give him praise. Come on. You can receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name.
Come on, pardon the noise. It's the sound of healing, of healing waters, of victory that's in this house. Receive of the Lord. He's the God that healeth ye. He's the God that heals tonight. God, send revival to youth groups. Send revival to churches that are represented here tonight. Situations and circumstances, God, that they've been fighting hell. Give them a reprieve of the Holy Ghost. Break every yoke and bondage of sin. Let them, God, be free in the name of the Lord. God, tonight do it because you love us. Do it because you want to, Lord. We yield ourselves to you to receive. We receive what you have for us, God. Come on, if someone receives the Holy Ghost, just let us know. We're rejoicing what God's doing. If you've been healed in your body, let us know because we want to rejoice in what the Holy Ghost is doing. Elder just told us there's one to receive the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. Come on. The Holy Ghost power is in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on up there in the balcony. Please do not be shy. Do not take a back seat. You can receive wherever you are in the building. You can get something from the Lord everywhere in the house. Some of you six to go to a place in prayer that you've never been before. It's going to be life changing. There's intercessors that the Holy Ghost is going to raise up in this house right now. I need some hungry young people. I need you to throw your hands up in the air right now. I want you to reach in the Holy Ghost. I want you to surrender yourself and submit yourself to the Holy Ghost right now. Yes. Let it cry out from the depths of your soul. Come on, let intercession, let intercessory prayer get a hold of us here tonight. In the name of Jesus. It don't matter what it sounds like. It doesn't matter what you act like. Give yourself to it. Come on, give yourself to that prayer. Give yourself to that consecration. Some of you young people stretch your hands toward the praise singers. The Holy Ghost is fixing to touch them. He's fixing to restore virtue back to them, fresh anointing back to them.
Come on, obey the Holy Ghost. Don't worry about doing anything wrong. You need to obey the Holy Ghost. Right now, just obey the Holy Ghost. There is apostolic ministry in this house right now. Come on, obey the Holy Ghost all over the house. In the name of Jesus.